Easy people, hope everyone's doing okay. Today's discussion, I want to speak about colonialism. As it's my view that colonialism really is a cover, a cover for an even bigger project that was undertaken and in our world that really streamlined many of the uh, operations that we see today. So colonialism as a, as a brief sort of view was a certain amount of countries went round to underdeveloped countries, as they say, and really conquered them, but then also built their infrastructure, their architecture, and all of the wonderful things that they uh, were found within these countries. But it's my view that the infrastructure was already there. I'll give an example, India, for example. I forget the name of the station, but it's the Victoria Terminal in Mumbai. Now, the colonial rulers, uh, Britain, they claim to have built this uh, structure and many other structures uh, within Mumbai and all over India. But this structure is a Tartarian structure. It's a beautiful building, has all of the antiquitech, all of the uh, hallmarks of being an energy building. So the cover story of colonialism means that they've gone around to all of these countries and they claimed that they build it all because you can't have these type of projects being built by primitive people because that doesn't fit the the timeline, the narrative of, of what we're told of history. We went around and brought these people up because they were just living in mud huts without any, um, you know, any understanding of, of higher intelligence. But for those that have travelled um, and you see these things and not just the the old buildings like that in India for example you have so many ancient sites that really you know that this infrastructure was already there it was it was there long before any colonial uh, interests set foot in those countries and we see this the common theme with much of these architectural buildings that they're all so similar the the chances of countries all around the world continent to continent building uh, similar architecture when they didn't have supposedly didn't have any awareness of each other is it's near on impossible I, I just don't see how every single country can do this unless there was a unified uh, awareness a unified viewpoint of electromagnetism free energy and that is why they were building these similar structures because they were harnessing free energy from the ether but of course all of these things have to be hidden they're not accepted to exist so you have to provide um, an official narrative of history that explains how all of these things were built. That is what colonialism is. The colonial rulers built all of the wonderful things. It wasn't the people that were already there. That wasn't already there, that architecture. So it's a very, very uh, clever way to explain how, how old world stuff is built um, and to hide the, the true principles, the true principles of all of the copper domes, the antennas, the, the barbed wires, the, the, even the architecture themselves, the engineering side of it. I mean, some of the structures are really, it's breathtaking to see. And you, and you see it from country to country to country. It doesn't matter where you go, you will find absolute um, genius pieces of, of engineering. So the, the colonial uh, story also has given people the appearance of... Uh, independence you know a lot of these countries will have a day an independence day where they celebrate all the flags will come out national pride um, the colonial people left and the people were given their country back but that really again is just a nice a nice uh, illusion to to give people the perception of, of freedom but what the colonial story also done it set up the international system of business the uh, admiralty law the way of the waters because if you look at, again, India as an example, the East India Company, uh, the Dutch had one as well. Uh, I think it might be the East Dutch Company or, or similar, um, where they were taking lots of the resources out of India, a lot of the products, the spices, the herbs, uh, manufactured things, anything that they could, they, they could take still, they did. And they sold it back to um, interests all over the world, mainly in Europe at this time. But you've got to create a system to be able to do that. And that is where... Uh, admiralty law comes in and you find the play on words in all of it look at the institutions that are fundamental to this this exchange mechanism the banks the banks of what it's the banks of the river and that is why you have uh, currency currency uh, cash flow liquidity 
all of these things. It's a play on, on, on the Admiralty law, the way of the waters. So you will find that in every country as well that you, you go round to. Um, countries that have a linked, uh, a linked story with colonialism. In those countries, if you find some of the biggest uh, national brands or what you would perceive as a national brand, that's an Indian business that is because it might have an Indian name or it's, it's very popular amongst Indians. But if you go down to the actual level of who owns that business, you will find it goes back to the um, big international business, the controlling families. So by giving people the illusion of independence giving them their day where we're going to leave physically we're going to leave you now physically we're going to let you have your country back but we've set up the infrastructure we've got the infrastructure we've got the corporations and we've even indoctrinated some people from your country into our secret societies to be front and center of all things going on in your country now and that is really how this this system uh, has been forced onto the people because again when they went round and started the colonial um, deception naturally people rebelled they they didn't want anything to do with this but they had better uh, better better arsenal of, of weapons you know they were they were just head and shoulders above some of these um countries that they they went over and conquered so you have to go along with it eventually and then again they also introduce ideas further down the line uh, into the universities about uh, uprisings against the colonial thing so they can they, they create the situation themselves and this is where it all gets its birthplace from as well in the universities people started to rise rise again at the colonial rulers and then they they vanish it makes it seem like well it sprung up organically your people were heroes they fought us off and we left but as i said they've set up the systems in the backgrounds the admiralty law uh, finance business e-commerce all of it is um a forced system on the people and this is where we are today with things. This is where we are at a very crossroads moment, I would say, because we're currently going through the fourth industrial revolution. And the fourth industrial revolution is the switch to AI, digital. Um, so the, the old ways, the admiralty way of doing things with the, with the banks, the banks will still be there, but we won't be using the currency, the cash flow, that'll be disappearing. It'll be going to digital. So this is a very, very crucial moment um, and all of these things are all linked, intertwined. It's been in operation for a, for an incredibly long time. Um, yeah, just just a short little video today. Probably ventured off into a few other fields there, but um, it's important to to read uh, the historical narrative, but not to accept it. What they give us, read between the lines with things, uh, give your own analysis, and just try to to piece. All, all the jigsaw pieces together, you know, it's really the best way to attain um, a better a better inner standard of things. Anyway, we'll leave that video there, waffled on a little bit at the end, does happen. Uh, have a beautiful day wherever you are, and I'll see you all real soon. Take care.